Hey everyone, this is Andrew Ty. Welcome to my YouTube channel. So did you know that you can now run Wii U games on the Apple Silicon Mac using the emulator Simu? And since this emulator was first made open source over two and a half months ago, a huge amount of development work has gone into the macOS port. And now a whole bunch of Wii U games are now playable, for example, Zelda Breath of the Wild and also Bayonetta 2 and plenty of other games too. So today I'm gonna to show you a fully up-to-date tutorial on how to get Wii U games running on your Apple Silicon Mac. So please subscribe if you wanna keep up to date with the latest Mac gaming tutorials. So the first thing I'm gonna do is to go to the Simu GitHub page, which I'll leave a link to in the description. And then we're gonna to go to the latest entry, which at the time of recording is 2.0-16. If you're watching this in the future, then this should be updated fairly regularly and you'll see a newer version here. But in any case, all we need to do is to open up this asset section here, and then we need to find the Mac OS DMG. So click on the Mac OS version and then download this file. So once the download is complete, we're gonna to go to Finder and then we're gonna to go to our downloads folder. And then we're gonna find Simu and then double click on this DMG file. And then we have the Simu application here. We're gonna go ahead and drag and drop this into the applications folder and then let go. So once that's done, we're gonna to move to applications and then we're gonna scroll down until we find the Simu application. So what you need to do is to hold down the control key and then click on the Simu application and then click open. And it's gonna allow you to manually open this file, press open. And now we can go ahead with the CMU setup. So the first thing is that we have the MLC01 path. This is the Wii U internal flash storage. This is an optional setting. You can ignore this if you're doing this for the first time. Second thing is that we're gonna set a game path. I'm going to select my game path here by pressing browse. Then I'm gonna look at my games folder and then find my CMU games section here. So it's relatively easy to dump your own ROMs from a hacked Wii U, or if you just go to Google and type in the name of the game and the word Wii U and then ROM, then you'll be able to find lots of different websites which allow you to download backups of different games. So now once you've selected your game folder where you're keeping all your files, press the open button, and then this is gonna set the file path. The next thing is that you should download the community graphics packs. So I'm gonna click on this now, and this is going to go ahead and download some of the tweaks, which is gonna make a lot of Wii U games run a lot better on the Mac. We don't have to view the graphics packs, we'll be looking at that later. And now we're gonna press next. So next thing I'm gonna do is to configure input. So I have a DualSense controller paired to my Mac, which I'm gonna to connect to now. What we're gonna do is to configure input. So I'm gonna press on this button. So here we're gonna configure our controller. We're gonna select controller one tab here. And then what we're gonna do is select the emulated controller the Wii U gamepad. And then we're gonna click this controller drop down here, and then we're gonna have this little mini window opening up here. What we wanna do is to select SDL controller, and that's gonna expose the Apple controllers that are paired up. So we've got our DualSense controller here. What we're gonna do is to select PS5 controller here, and then press add. And then what this is gonna do is to add all of the default controller bindings. You can just go ahead and set your own if you want. And you can confirm this is working by jiggling the joysticks. So once that's done, we can close this and then we can press close. So an important step here is to add the keys.txt file, which is gonna allow you to open certain games on the Wii U. So all you need to do is press go and then hold on the option key to reveal the library section here. And then it's gonna open up library. Then we're gonna double click on application support and then we're gonna find the CMU folder. And then what you're gonna find is you have a keys.txt file already in the root folder. And so what you should do is to locate the keys.txt on the internet. Just do a search for Wii U keys.txt and then paste them into this file and then and press save, and then you'll be able to decrypt a whole bunch of other games. So now that we've loaded up Simi, we need to change a few settings. So here we're gonna to go to options, and then we're gonna to go to general settings here. And we'll switch to graphics, and then we're gonna make sure that we're on the Vulkan Graphics API, and we're gonna turn VSync to double buffering. Then within the audio tab, we need to make sure that we have audio turned on. So this TV audio section here is the main audio, and we need to select an audio device. Here we're gonna select MacBook Pro speakers. Next, what we're gonna do is go back to options, and then go to graphics packs. And these are the graphics packs that we installed earlier, and this is going to be very relevant for a game like Breath of the Wild. What you wanna do is to expand this mod section here, and one of the most important ones is to enable FPS++. So here I'm gonna change the FPS limit to 120 FPS because I'm using a MacBook Pro with the ProMotion display. And then here I'm gonna click on graphics, and we're gonna change the resolution to 1080p. So make sure to click on the left box of the graphics to enable the patch. And then here in enhancements, we're gonna enable this as well. And then we're gonna enable Surfrost preset, which is recommended. And then we can go ahead and close this. So now what I'm going to do is to double click on a game like Breath of the Wild and I'm going to launch it for the first time. So in 2.0-16 Experimental, there is an issue with Vulkan. So the latest Vulkan update has broken some of the performance and in order to fix it, what you can do is to disable accurate barriers. So if we turn this back on, you're going to find that the frame rate is going to tank to about 20 FPS. However, if we turn this off, 
Then this says here, disabling the accurate barriers option will lead to flickering graphics, but may improve performance. It is highly recommended that you leave this turned on. However, if we have it turned off, then frame rate reaches around 38 to 40 FPS on the M1 Max chip. So the other performance issue you're gonna notice a lot is the stuttering, which is caused by shader compilation. Basically, every time a specific action is performed, then it will be compiling new shaders on the top left hand side of the screen. However, once the particular animation has been completed, then the shader will have already been compiled and so you won't necessarily get that stutter again. So in the beginning of the game especially, your frame rate is going to be very variable, but after you've been playing for a while, then shaders will have fully compiled and it will all be smooth gameplay from there. So a huge amount of work has been done on Simi to get games like Breath of the Wild working a lot better on the Mac. However, there are still some graphical issues that are going to be present. For example, some doors and objects don't quite render correctly and they're invisible. However, Discord user Fabs has said that Breath of the Wild is 98% playable and it's very likely that the developers of CMU will have many of these issues fixed in the very near future. So in other games, you might experience this flickering texture issue. So for example, this is Bayonetta 2 and this can be quite an irritating bug. And I'm going to show you the fix today, which may apply to other games as well. So what we're going to do is go to the top right hand side of the screen and then click on spotlight. Then we're going to type in the word terminal. And then we're going to use the command mvk underscore config underscore fast underscore math underscore enabled equals zero. Then we put a space here. Then we're going to go to finder and then go to our applications folder and then find Simu. We're going to control click on the application and go to show package contents, double click on contents, double click on Mac OS, and then find the CMU application within here. Then we're going to drag and drop it into our terminal window. And then what this is going to do is going to disable fast math for CMU in this instance. So I'm going to press return now, and then CMU is going to open with that parameter. And then we're going to double click on Bayonetta and then run the game. So now the game is loaded up and we don't have any of those texture flickering issues anymore. So apparently this is meant to make the game run a little bit slower, but it's going to work a lot better now. And this is really good because the game performs fantastically at 1080p running on the MacBook Pro with the M1 Max chip. And hopefully the performance of other games is also going to improve as well. So if you want to find out more about Wii U Mac compatibility, then I do highly recommend going to this website, which I'll leave a link to in the description. This is the CMU macOS compatibility table, where you're going to find our tests for a whole bunch of different Wii U games and how they perform on Apple Silicon Macs. If you have any technical issues, then I'm afraid that I'm probably not going to be able to help you in the comments. However, you can go to this Discord here. And once you launch the Discord, what you can do is go into CMU Dev Public, and then you can find a thread and find the macOS development thread, and you're going to find the community of Mac CMU gamers. And hopefully you'll find some help with any issues that you may encounter. Another really valuable resource has been this video from VMU, who goes into a little bit more detail about some of the other issues, for example, multiplayer. So make sure to check out this video as well. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. Hopefully we're going to see lots more CMU development in the future. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.